Welcome back to Road Notes. So, have you ever wanted to do a little gardening while you live the RV lifestyle? Beep, beep. Road Notes. Welcome back to Road Notes. So today we're going to talk a little bit about something most people don't think they can do while they're on the road, and that's garden. So I have always been an avid gardener. Flowers, vegetables, orchids, you name it. And when we lived in Sticks and Bricks, I had a huge greenhouse and would grow pretty much everything. So when we moved into Onyx, obviously a lot of that stuff went by the wayside, but now I have the itch again to start trying to grow food, partly because it's... A great stress reliever and part of it is because with the cost of everything going through the roof now every little bit helps so a lot of people don't even know well where do I start or how to choose what to grow so today we're just going to talk about basics and I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that you can do so that it's not a huge undertaking if you are moving around a little bit more frequently and then um, we're going to do a couple of experiments with some things and then we're going to track it and see how they do and hopefully expand out. Since it's hot right now, it limits some things that we can do um, because there's a lot of stuff that really you can't grow until the fall. But there's some other things that you can grow in Florida in the summer, and we're gonna talk about that. So stay tuned, and we're gonna hopefully open your eyes to something new that you can try. So we're gonna start with some basics. As you can see, I've had, I was allowed to bring uh, four hanging baskets with us on the road. So I have two that have um, geraniums and two that have uh, an orchid. And they're getting really played out at this point. They're not doing very well. They're coming back and I'm gonna keep some of it. But we're going to reuse some of these pots for one thing. And then we're going to make hanging baskets with these two, which are basic um, I think these are 12 inch or 14 inch hanging baskets from Lowe's that come with the coconut liner that you just fill with soil and then the plants. So it doesn't look like much here. Plants actually don't even look like they're in great shape if you really get a good look at them, which is kind of hard to see. Um, but what I have a tendency to do is pick plants from the clearance section at Lowe's. And the reason why I do this is usually they've already had like a first run, but when you flip this over, it clearly shows you that it blooms all spring, summer, and fall. So you still have a lot of life in these plants. Sometimes they're just root bound or the plant itself, the dirt uh, just needs refreshed and they need to be clipped back. The nice thing about these is you can get them at 50% or more discount. So these little guys I got for a dollar instead of paying uh, full price. And then you just clip them and add them to your basket. Now the second thing is, is when you are interested in growing perennials and annuals, you need to keep in mind that some of them attract bees. Well, bees are very, very helpful if you want to grow any kind of vegetables. Um, so in Florida, you try to choose Florida friendly, uh, flowers, shrubs, those kinds of things, because they can withstand the heat and they can also withstand the lack of water at times. Being in baskets, it's gonna be a little bit different, but uh, what we're gonna do is add some soil and we're gonna build two baskets, and then we're going to build an herb basket. So I'm a petunia lover, but it's the time of year where the petunias are kind of in between seasons, so I'm not gonna add them to this basket, but I'll be bringing them back at a later point. So for this basket, we're gonna do uh, zinnia, these verbenas, which like I said, they just need to be clipped back and given a little bit of love, a dianthus, and a morning glory. These are purple. So that not only are we gonna have really nice color, but we also have four Florida friendly uh, plants. And we're going to add the geraniums into the basket as well. So I'm gonna clip those out of there and put them in here. So we should have a nice variety of color. All of these are either mounding or trailing, meaning they'll go up or they'll grow out and down to make the basket full. 
and these are all considered full sun. Now, full sun in Florida means six hours or more, so they can take the pounding afternoon heat. If you want to grow uh, vegetables in Florida, you have to choose plants that are that are helpful, and you want to attract as many butterflies and bees as you can. Now, the problem there is that with baskets, you can't always choose big plants, so we had to go with the little ones because there's a lot of Florida-friendly ones that are uh, that grow very large, and you just we just don't have that kind of geography here. So we're going to make these baskets, and then we're going to start making an herb basket and for this we're going to do an italian oregano a parsley and leeks so if you're not sure what leeks are they're kind of looking like a little bit like an onion oh the birds are fighting uh, a little bit like an onion and so this is going to take up a little bit of space in the basket and then eventually we're going to add some basil and some other things now the problem here is the critters like these vegetables and herbs. So we're going to see if they can withstand before I do a whole lot of adding. If you don't feed them well, they don't grow. So I have a tendency to use this, the Stay Green Flower and Vegetable, or a Miracle Grow, depending on which is cheaper at the time. And I also use uh, the Performance Organics for fertilizer. And they seem to work pretty well. I will mix this in with the soil before I add the plants. Okay, so first basket is done and yes it looks a little rough right now but you got to let everything settle in and I still have to water it there's going to be some good rains this weekend so over the next week it's going to start taking root and it should produce some very very nice flowers I'm going to finish clipping this one and then I'm going to put the other one together and I'm going to hang it and there's the second basket same as the first so I got this one hung up. As you can see, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna get it watered and let it sit. So now I have two of these right now that are gonna be empty that had the geranium. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the soil because I don't know if you can see underneath, it's like very nutrient deficient. So I'm gonna give it a boost and we're gonna use this for the first set of herbs. Okay, so here's the first herb basket, and all I did was recycle one of the ones that I had. So, we've got leeks, the Italian oregano, and the parsley, and I can tell you it smells amazing already. So I'm really hopeful that the rabbits and all of the friends that like to wander at night will leave it alone. So we'll find out. So, as you can see, you can still garden in a small space with flowers. Next, we're going to do vegetables. We've got happy baskets. Now, the bees will come. So, next we're going to talk about vegetables. So, believe it or not, you can actually grow a lot of vegetables from scraps of the vegetables that you already have. Sometimes you need to grow them in water first and sometimes they can go straight in the dirt. So we're gonna start putting vegetables to the test on the road and see if they're gonna grow. So depending on where you live, there are these things called hardiness zones. Florida is obviously a, a high number and then uh, the further north you go, the zones get less and less from, I think it starts at one, but it basically means that it's how hardy a plant is if it's cold and how well it tolerates it in the heat. So when you're looking for plants where you live, you wanna make sure that they can withstand the environment. This goes also for vegetables. There are certain vegetables that only grow in certain climates. So in Florida, tomatoes is obviously one that would grow very, very well. Um, citrus, you know, these kinds of things. And they can, a lot of them grow in pots. So we're gonna look at some of the things that you can grow to maybe save yourselves a little bit of money. You can get your children involved in it and doing it in a small space. I used to grow quite a bit of things, including uh, broccoli and spinach and all these things. Being that it's summer, spinach is out, 
broccoli, spinach, um, some kinds of beans and things, they need the fall. So we're gonna do um, onions. Uh, probably I'm gonna do show you how to do green onions, celery, and bok choy from uh, the ones that we have already, growing them basically from an old plant. And I'm going to also show you a couple of tricks. So it's a day later after planting everybody and you can already see that they're starting to kind of root themselves and what looked pretty bad yesterday coming out of the container this clearance plants are all starting to show signs of life so in the next week with good watering and fertilizing they will be flourishing and the bees will come so I have this dollar store container that's all broken and we're gonna use it to root some green onions and some celery. All right, so a lot of people are aware that you can regrow vegetables from scraps. And in this case, we're going to start propagating some basic kitchen vegetables. Um, some carrots, uh, celery, a bok choy, and some green onions. Now, these things typically need to soak in water to get a little bit of a root system before they go uh, into the soil. So we're gonna go ahead and, I already cut them, and I'm gonna go ahead and scrape. I like to typically scrape the bottoms a little bit before I put them to soak. So we'll put it a little bit here and I'm probably going to raise them up just a little bit in the bucket because I want them to be able to get water underneath. And so I'm going to arrange them all. So whatever container you're going to use in the house, I used to use glass, um, little glass jars and I used to suspend them in it or sit them in the bottom because I don't have that equipment. Now I'm going to use this old bucket, but you can see there's just a little bit of water in the bottom and then you would just sit the vegetables in and I'm like I said I might raise these up just a little bit in a day or two but all you do is stand them up and let them go and then each day you make sure there's plenty of water and you recheck them and then in about five to seven days these guys are going to be ready to plant now the carrots might not work in here because it is a little bit deeper than they like typically but we'll give it a try and if it doesn't work we'll try it again with some new carrots so there's plenty of room for scraps in here and now we see how they do over the next week all right so they're all set and i'm going to check them each day and i'm going to add so that we'll have a rotation you know when you're first developing um, vegetables that grow year round. It takes time to get the first crop going. And um, it's a little too hot for some of the other things. So we're gonna concentrate on things that'll grow real easily in the heat. And then over here, yesterday's uh, herbs, as you can see, they're already taking off in the pot. They're starting to thrive already. So these are some simple things that you can do for minimal cost and have fresh vegetables. Now. In the next video, we'll show how to transport these into dirt and, or transplant them, I should say, into dirt and what they look like after they've been soaking for about a week. Okay, so it is day one post planting. As you can see, we're already starting to get some growth on our bok choy. Not too much, well, a little bit of something going on with the celery, but as you can see, there's one carrot doing something and some of the green onions are starting to sprout. All right, day two. You can see we've got some growth on a couple of the carrots. And I added uh, lettuce. So we've got some growth on lettuce, we've got a little growth on the celery, a little bit of growth on the bok choy, and then I need to add a little bit more water here as the green onions are starting to grow. This is day three. And we had a little windstorm apparently, everything fell out. So we're gonna replace every, all the water. But as you can see, the bok choy is growing quite a bit. And we've got some carrots growing now. And we're gonna put these 
in the soil tomorrow because they're all growing. And then I'll leave the other ones for a few days. The celery is not doing so good and the lettuce was doing good until it hit the ground. So we'll see. All right, see the carrots are starting to take off a little bit and so is the bok choy. I took out the um, green onions and I planted them in the dirt. And as you can see, we're gonna have nine new ones. And this is just the first crop. So we're gonna grow some food. And now we've planted the bok choy the celery and one lettuce. I'm gonna need a bigger pot, but for right now they're doing good and I'll transfer them into a larger pot when I can get one. All right, so now it's been a week and you can see I've got bok choy. I've got a new celery growing and I have two carrots with a third one kind of peeking himself. A couple of them didn't make it, but this was only the first run and I've never used these smaller pots. So, the green onions are all looking great. Pretty soon they'll be ready to be used. And the herbs are taking off. So as you can see, growing a small garden in an RV is still possible. You could grow pretty much anything from scraps. And so what I'm gonna do is expand this out now and put everything into a larger pot so that I'm not carrying so many little pots. And um, since we're moving tomorrow, I'll probably get that and leave the green onions in this but get a bigger pot for these because they need a little bit more room to spread out and uh one of the pots like the coconut for that one okay so i went to lowe's and decided to go ahead and combine all of the vegetables so now i've got a three foot uh they call this an ocean well it's turning oceans into planters it's the ocean series and it's three feet so I've got a couple of carrots. This is the celery. Then the green onions are in the middle. And I've got the bok choy and another carrot. And then I'm going to use one of the extras that I had for babies. And then I'm gonna keep them rotating. The other thing that I did to conserve space was I got a new coconut planter. And now I have basil in with the herbs. So I've got basil, leeks, oregano, and parsley got a really nice campsite right now and the flowers are starting to bloom you can see we've got some mums we've got the first basket we made and now we've got the herbs and finally some orchids and then I've got a tray with all the vegetables welcome to day two of sprouting. So we just took these guys out of the closet. And then we're going to drain them again. And the mason jar should stay in this position, shake them a little, and spread out the seeds. Full of sprouts. I mean, that's amazing. So if you like what you see you know what to do hope you enjoyed the video hope you get your green thumb going and do some gardening gardening on the road that is we'll see you soon